spoken back. Sorry, I haven't posted in a couple of days, but I work three jobs. So it's not as easy as just posting because you have to watch so many court cases to get to the good ones. But I did find some good ones and um, I was able to slap something together. I have, a, I have a few more, so I might do two videos today. I'm not sure, um, but these are good and, and you'll like them. The first one, I don't know if any attorneys are watching, but if you are, you might just want to skip through the first one because it'll kill you. It'll kill, <laughs> it'll kill you to see this poor attorney struggle, struggle, struggle and fail. Oh, but it's Giles. Judge Giles, I love him. Um, I watch him every day because I, I, he's the best. It, I don't see very many crazy people in his courtroom because <laughs> he would not allow it. But he, the, the lawyers, like if you're not on point, he will chew you up and spit you out. And he does it all the time. It's, it's great. Um, so we're going to start with, with Giles. And I don't understand what, what happened to the prosecutor this day. I've watched him many times and he's great. Uh, you know, he, he's usually on point. Um, but, but today it was just a, a, a bad, bad, bad day for me. So here we go. The future of the state of Michigan versus Wayne Mullins. The defendant is charged with count one, breaking and entering a building with intent. Count two, larceny in a building, habitual offender for notice. Also calling case number 2357554, the people of the state of Michigan versus Wayne Mullins. The defendant is charged with count one, breaking and entering a building with intent. Count two, larceny in a building, habitual offender for notice. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to tell you something you're not going to be able to unsee once you see this, and you're going to be looking for it later. That box has been on the floor in that courtroom for months, and I only say months because that's as long as I've been watching. So it's probably been there way before that. Every time I log in, that box is there. Nobody moves it. Nobody puts it away. Somebody's going to kill themselves um, on that box. But every <laughs> every time I log in, it's so annoying. That box is just sitting in the middle of court. And now you won't be able to watch Judge Giles without looking for that box. <laughs> client um, accused of breaking and entering into the same facility on the same night within a matter of two hours. So for the sense of expediency and maybe judicial economy, hold both exams at one time rather than calling these two back-to-back -back cases. If counsel has no objection, it don't make sense. I have no objection. And I also, I should point out for the record, the exact same witness as well. Two different sets of police officers. I'm calling the same person. But the uh, complaint is the same. And I believe one of the uh, witnesses in the hallway is the same. Okay. Yes, Judge. The people call um, Reverend Heard. That was it. That was the only good thing that that prosecutor does Heard. today. It goes downhill fast. Poor guy. I feel so sorry for him.
Do you swear or affirm to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, the whole God? Yes, I do. I need to put a door towards you. Before we begin, I, I failed to, to point out which is a question. All right. Well, any of our witnesses testifying today at trial or anytime in the future must be the courtroom, Zoom, and on YouTube or be denied that future testimony. All right. Reverend Hurd, right? Yes. Okay. Reverend Hurd, you're going to be asked a series of questions. Um, you have to ask a question about Miles Burke. Right. The person will be asked by the prosecutor and the defense attorney may ask you questions, and I may also ask you questions. You have to answer all those questions out loud verbally. You know, it's a, um, you can't just shake your head and say, uh huh, because uh, none of that comes across on the transcript. Right. Okay. All right. Also, when you ask a question, I need you to answer the question and stop. So if it's a yes or no type of question, just say yes or no. Yeah. And if any additional information, go just ask me that question. Right. We all have a tendency when we talk about something that, especially something that's been traumatic, we tend to ramble. You know, we want to get the whole story out, but we say, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. You know, just to get it all out. If you do that, I'm going to miss something. If I miss something, I might not make the right decision. Okay? That's why we proceed by one question, one answer, that way I can understand what happens. I know nothing about this case. The only thing I know about this case is the defendant's name and what he's charged with. I know your name. That's why I get all my information from you inside this courtroom. Okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. See, didn't he sound like nice and reasonable and just an all-around good guy? <laughs> he is to people. <laughs> But not to lawyers. Never seen. Please state your name again for the record. Reverend Darwin L. Hurd. And when I am referring, I'm referring to on the date of 03 2023. Um, did you go to the location of 642 West Nichols, Detroit, Michigan, 48203? Yes. And did you go there for two incidents? Yes. And is that in uh, Detroit County of Wayne? Yes. And when you went to the location, we'll talk about the first um, time you went to the location. When you went there, um, what did you observe? It took a little time to find out uh, how the building was uh, breached. And then uh, as I walked along the side, I could see that it was through a, a basement window. And you saw, um, did you go inside? Uh, what is this building that you're describing? Grace Henry Church, 642 West McNichols. And what did you observe? Um, did you go into the building and see if anything was missing? I went in after the police uh, arrived. There were about three cars that arrived. And what did you, um, was anything taken from the building? Yes. Um, it's kind of hazy because there were two different circumstances. Talk about the first incident. Okay. So the first incident, um, we noticed that a... Uh, is to the region. Yep. You can only say what you saw. What you noticed. Okay. I noticed that the radiator or the heater was gone out of the pastor's study. What about the second incident? Uh, the second incident, there were, uh, there was a bag of uh, items that had been put together for Easter, an Easter giveaway for children, that was gone. Um, I can't remember some of the other things that we had listed. And do you have security at your uh, church? Yes. Was the, do you see a person in the courtroom today who was uh, employed as a security at your church? Yes. And employed um, in what capacity? What was his working hours? Roughly around 9.30 a.m. until about 1 o'clock when service is over on Saturdays. 
and periodically we have we have him do odd jobs. Is that the record reflect that the witness is identified? The witness hasn't identified anybody. Yep. Right there, everything just fell apart. Everything just fell apart right there. So all, all he has to do is say, you know, can you point him out? Can you describe an article of clothes that he's wearing? You, you know, name, identify him somehow. He didn't identify him at all. All he said was somebody in the courtroom works at the church. That's all he said. It could be anybody. And Giles clearly told the prosecutor he didn't identify nobody. He just didn't. And then there, every nothing, nothing else is going to work because of that one part right here. Um, and during those working hours, what would the um, person you see in the courtroom uh, do? Watch the exterior of the church, uh, essentially the parking lot of the cars, we uh, to prevent incidents from happening with the cars. So the first incident, you're saying there was uh, the thing repeat what you're saying would stick in the first incident? Fiction has been asking I, I got it. Man. Oh, yeah. Radiator. Heater. 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 Okay. And how long did uh, Seth person in the courtroom work for you? I'm not sure. I, I expect it. And I, I can't tell you precisely. Did you fire this person after the incident? No. Okay. No further questions. Oh, bad move. No. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. This other attorney, he had a game plan coming into here what he was going to do for his client. And then this gift from heaven just fell right into his lap right there. So now he has a choice. He, he has to decide what to do real quick. And he does the right thing. You think about it for a second, especially before I do something. No, I have no questions. <laughs> yes, I have um, witness David. David Loftus. Mm -hmm. 
What are your um, credentials? Uh, I work for Wayne County Sheriff's Department. I've been there uh, 20 years. I'm assigned to the FAST Violent Crime Reduction Task Force. And what do you do for that, that task force? Why do I care? This is, I don't even know about this incident. He can offer proof to the tether. Okay, well then, okay. Um, I'll to respect the, say that first. I just need to know what his relationship is to this okay. case and what he did on this case. What is your relationship to this case? Um, at the task force and at uh, the teller unit I worked before, I provide reports for um, police agencies, prosecutors, etc. cetera. Uh, whenever we can cause request and uh, reports on certain people or a certain area, like police officers might call and say, hey, there was a crime at six and one word at midnight on the first. Can you run a GPF report and show whoever was on tether is in that area? Then we forward that report to whoever's asking for it. And are you familiar with these tether reports? Yes. And are they kept in your ordinary course of business? Yes. And do you have knowledge of the reports? A whole lot. That's a yes. My apologies. May I approach the witness who proposed this exhibit one? Let's see. I've seen it. I've seen it. What do you recognize when you're holding? This is a um, IntelliTrack court report. It shows a um, first page has a map on it, and they always come with the first page as a map and has the track in behind it, itemized um, for whatever, however long you download it. And you're familiar with this? I am. And how do you recognize it? Um, I've downloaded probably 500 of these in the last three or four years, and um, it's pretty much every report's the same when you download court reports. People in the have proposed this if they want to open this. That's objective, just general foundation. How's it relevant to this case? Number one, number two. Yeah. What theory is the people playing in these places on to? Oh, poor guy. Objection. Our motion is denied. What is the um, document you're looking at report? This is a court report um, dated 4-3-2023 for Mr. Wayne Mullins. It is a court report which shows his tracking for whatever time was requested. It shows on March 19th. So that March. Again, I'm not the exact, now we're getting into the hearsay. Yeah, get into what's in it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the next one. What is the report uh, used for? This report again, like if uh, police agency calls, uh, prosecutors, uh, investigators, we provide them with this report. They're, they give us a timeline. We type in the system a timeline, the per you know the person, and it bring out it show this report on the computer. And we download it, we email it. It shows it shows um, their track and where they're at in this time period. And it produces a map with the GPS coordinates points on it, which can be zoomed in even more. And this is kept in your ordinary course of business? Yes. Um, and it's kept either positively, I want to say positively, frame it positively, if it's kept all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's kept. It, it, it's, in, it's in a system which we, we have access to, um, certain, in certain deputies in Wayne County. We have access to as well as the analysts at certain uh, task force have uh, access to it. 
Are you familiar with this case? This case just um, a little bit from what I know, from what was explained to uh, from you and what I downloaded on here in a police report I looked at yesterday. Are you familiar with the time um, of this event? I'm um, not real familiar with it. Um, I don't know when the actual events happened. That's something I think you would ask me and I would show you at a time frame where he was. You're familiar with how the records are kept? I am. People move to make proposed exhibit one into evidence. There's, I don't think that's a proper foundation. You haven't said anything, you haven't already asked. You asked some of the same questions over and over again. So, objection is sustained. Do you have access to these records? I do. And do you? Um, And you're familiar with these records? Yes, sir. Again, I've heard the same questions over and over again. Yes, Judge. Do you have knowledge of these records? I do. Counsel? Hello, boy. That's like the at least the third, if not the fourth time you asked them about. One moment, Judge. Do your duties include uh, the task of managing these records? It is. How do you manage these records? They're in a database. Um, this one is uh, IntelliTrack. It's a database that, again, I have access to. And um, use Mr. Mullins as an example. I just type in his name, and it shows it shows him on the screen. It shows him where he's at. And if he was still on Tether, and I could go back into history and find out where he was while he was on Tether. People move to amend proposals if it one. Again, yeah, they, they, they foundation and relevance at this point, Judge. Objection sustained. What do you do to obtain this information? Just sign into the database. Again, um, if it's a name, if it's a certain person they have in mind, I would type in the name. General area again, like saw a crime was committed at Woodward and Six Mile on the first of January. I would type in them dates in a grid, say five thousand feet. It would show who was in that area in that time frame if they were on the. And what procedure do you follow? <laughs> a procedure, um, you just type it in. Um, take it. There's really no procedure. You just print it. You know, you download the report. Then you send it to who's requesting it. There's like no supervisor approval, and you just just do it. How long do you keep these records? <sighs> I keep them until I still have testified probably a hundred times with other cases, and I still keep them in case of appeals or whatever. Are these forms kept in a normal, ordinary course of business? Yes. People move to amend proposals in the one. Again, Judge, it's not relevant. We haven't heard any foundation yet. That's correct. Objection is the same. How, um, what sort of records does this keep? Like, what is it? Go through that. Okay, oh, yeah. I'm not gonna go through it again. The people would ask to recall Reverend Hurd 
to address the timeline and recall uh, Detective Loftus um, to address why then it would be relevant. Because Reverend Hurd can address the timeline why it's relevant. Well, you got to finish with this witness, and then, then you can make a motion to recall Reverend Hurd yeah. if you need to. But you, no, this, this, I, you know, I'm not going to put this witness off for 10 minutes, bring yeah. back another witness, bring them back another. You know, I'm, I'm not, no, that's not how it's done. Yeah. Okay. With my argument to um, relevancy for this, you have a question. Yes, I made a ruling. Yes, 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 Judge. Yeah. Does the uh, does the in your work what kind of um, data does it give out with these records? He gives it. He answered that question already. I got it. I understand what it does. Oh, yeah. What is the purpose of this um, that you have? This, this report, the purpose of this is... Oh, is this right, Judge? This is the purpose? I'm sorry. I, I understand what the deputy does. Yeah. Well, I, you know, we've gone through it in vivid detail. I understand what he does and what the report says.
does the what kind of data is kept in these reports? I got that. Sh I don't need it. I don't need to hear it again. He's already testified to that. Is there specific times kept in these reports? There is. There is a timeline which I looked at and I seen that. Well, general, just, general, not, no, okay. no. just generally, okay. generally. Yes, yes, there's, there's, time, there's time frame where he's at at certain times. Not anymore. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, you have to, in these reports I kept, are there specific timelines kept? Yes. Yes. People move to amend proposals in the one. It's not relevant. Just. Right. Are there specific dates kept in generally in these reports? Yes. People move to amend proposals at one. Nine. For the same reasons, it's been denied. May. At least four times before. May I give an argument? No. These ports generally give a specific location. Correct. And time. Correct. And date. Correct. And these reports show where generally a person would be traveling. Correct. And generally these reports show where a person would be within an area as well. Correct. People move to new proposals in the one. Objection, Judge, it's not relevant still. Objection sustained. Was there a report taken by a person who's in the courtroom today? Yes. And what is that name of the report taken? Wayne Mullins. People move to amend proposals in one. That's still the same objection, I assume. Yes, Judge. Good. What was his name? People would um, ask to be able to call this witness back and call OIC Sterner to be able to establish. For what purpose? This back. Uh, establish what? a timeline. What timeline? To be able to establish um, when the incidents occurred, the first and the second one, and be able to show through the tether results of the first and the second one, and be able to show through the tether results with recalling this witness. That the tether was hit during a certain time. When Why would he have to be recalled? Because I'd like to make this report. Then, then do it. Just do it the way you're supposed to do it, according to the court rules. Yes, Judge.
How would this document be relevant to this case? Objection, Judge. How can you? Ask them for a legal determination, yes, counsel. Does this document relate to a um, incident that occurred on three twenty? You mean? Yes, Judge. One moment. What was the purpose of this report being called? Upon request. Um, for a crime that occurred. Objection, Judge. That's a legal conclusion. Crime that occurred. An alleged crime. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. And we're in about five years. My apologies. Yes. All right. So, uh, what was the purpose that the district department was, was requested um, for an alleged crime that happened at a certain area? And uncertainty. Yes. And do you know why this um, report was called for this specific person? Um, because no, I, I don't know why the police requested it. I, I don't know why why the police requested yes. it for an alleged crime. I would I imagine. People move to amend proposal to the warrant. Has not been on the motion still hasn't been established. Again, I have to object for that assessment. Is the objections of stand on foundation or relevance? Relevance. On foundation. Foundation. And And this record was made in the routine course of business, correct? Again, yes. Six times. Yes. Um, you have personal knowledge of this matter? I do. I'm sorry, personal knowledge of this what matter? matter? What, what, what are we talking about here? The um, report. Yes. How is that relevant? Well, I mean, it could be relevant. I'm allowed the question. Okay. And you work uh, at a business. What's the business name again? Wayne well, County Sheriff's Office. And when working there, um, these records are kept. I don't need to know generally what happens to any records. I'm only concerned about this case. Yes. Please. And they focused. Going to this case specifically, um, what um, does the report, uh, does the report 
given details about um, generally uh, for people, why is why is this report generated? What kind of people would generate this report? What do I care? What kind of people generally? Want? Well, I'm anything about the report. I mean, I want to get to why a person would be with the someone. Yeah. You have to authenticate the report. You have to authenticate its actions to make them relevant to this this. These proceedings, and that's as far as I'm going to go and tell you. And I probably went too far going there. You're so kind, Judge. What actions did you take regarding this report? I think we've already heard this sometime. Yeah, I got that. And. And. People moved to amend proposed exhibit one as this report was kept in the ordinary course of business. Nine. Have no further questions. No questions for Stan. Crash and burn. Stephanie, uh, can you approach for a second? Crash and burn, poor guy. One thing though, this prosecutor will never ever forget what happened here and he will never ever ever make this mistake again. But take care, Mr. Walters. Take care. Sorry about that. We have no further witnesses. No witnesses for the professors. Thank you. The people um, motion to dismiss for insufficient evidence. No both objection. cases. No objection. No, it's dismissed without prejudice. So it was dismissed without prejudice, which means. The prosecutor is going to come back again and, and and do it right the next time and everything will, will be fine but oh that was so hard to watch everybody watching just wanted to help him so bad but he was on his own and now he knows this this next one tr tries to attack his attorney and the judge whew, she's not having it mm -hmm. State versus Larry Harris, is, who is accused of criminal trespass from July 13, 2023, in accusation 23 CR 4428E. Mr. Harris, you've been advised of your right to remain silent, and your attorney is Mr. Bartell. Mr. Howard? 56 total. We got three open uh, shop buildings and four. All right. That's good. Thank you. Um, Ms. Um, Stafford, is it? Or? Who's our prosecutor? Ms. Stafford? Yes? I apologize, Your Honor. What position? I just had some technical this problems. This is position seven, Mr. Larry Harris. Um, he's got three open shoplifting matters, at least. That's part of the um, GCIC. Yeah, uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, so the state's recommendation is uh, $1,500 surety bond, no alcohol, drugs, or weapons, and stay away from 3040 Lakewood Avenue. Um, the facts to this case, this incident occurred on the on July 13th, 2023 um, at that location, which is a 
BP gas station. Um, officers responded to that location for a criminal trespass call. When they arrived, they saw the defendant sitting in a vehicle um, close by. Uh, the defendant had already been given a trespass warning from that location on June 18, 2023, and he had been advised not to return. Officers then spoke to the employee um, at that location who stated that the defendant had entered the business but exit, exited shortly after, um, at which point he immediately called 911 because he knew he was not supposed to be there and he was known to be a shoplifter from that location. Um, and he had, in fact, told the defendant he was not to return within the next year due to the fact that the defendant has several um, open cases, including um, criminal trespassing and theft by shoplifting. Um, that is the reason why our office is asking for that bond. Mr. Bartell? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Um, I have spoken with Mr. Harris. Uh, he, uh, too, uh, well, he's uh, 52 years old. He uh, was born and raised in Atlanta. I'm advised uh, he, he's been here all of his life. Um, he does have extended family. His parents are deceased, but he has siblings and cousins and aunts and uncles who live in the metro Atlanta area. It looks like there's an associated uh, shoplifting charge with this charge, but it looks like um, Mr. Harris did. That was uh, transferred to felony. And Mr. Harris, have you had a first appearance on that? It looks like he was on the first appearance calendar <coughs> for felony. Uh, um. for that. Brenda went to court for that. I went to court for that before I came to this courtroom. Okay, so you said you did not get a bond on that charge, shoplifting? Uh, no. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if that's true, but if not, that would certainly keep Mr. Yeah. Harris in. But just regarding the trespass charge that's here before his judge, uh, we would just ask for a $500 good bond. Okay. Bond is set at $500. It is a good bond to stay 500 yards away. That's the length of five football fields from the BP gas station at 3040, uh, was it Lakewood Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia? Uh, we need to- Harris, you, you can't go back to that location. Yeah. I didn't tell that. I, I would ride with somebody, they pulled up to get some gas, and I was so out in the car. I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say anything else, sir, but just you can't Harris. go near that location, okay? Mr. Uh, please unmute courtroom two. Oh, no, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm sorry. Who is this? Every time I say something, he got something like this. My lawyer, he won't even let me talk. He, he was doing that on top of Mr. Harris, Mr. Harris, one more time. If you use a profanity, that $500 bond is going to be $5,000. Now you listen carefully. You have a right to remain silent. Anything you say, your statements can be used against you and help the prosecution convict you of this charge. What Mr. Bartell is doing is the smart and correct thing to do. He's trying to tell you to be quiet so that you don't damage your, his ability to defend you. Do you understand? Yeah, but I was talking to you. Well, you can talk to me, but when you talk to me, we have prosecutors on the screen who are listening to what you're saying. So Mr. Bartell, whatever he's saying to you is for your benefit and only for your benefit. So if you want to keep on talking, you keep on talking because your grave is getting deeper. Okay. You want to talk? I'm good. Good boy. Okay. Thank you. $500 surety bond. Stay away from the BP. Thank you. Have a nice day. Armo Lisa Leo now residing. All right. So this, this next one, compassion. She just shows too much, I think, compassion. Um, not too much compassion, but what what she did in the end is what absolutely needs to be done with, with this guy. It's the only way to get him help. You know, he needs help. And, you know, she tried very hard to give him what he wanted, but he, he ruins that real quick. Um, good morning, everyone. This is the Friday, July 14th, 8.30 score calendar. And Ms. Liu, who will we be starting with today? Thank you, Honor. Uh, maybe we can start actually with Mr. McIntyre, who's on the iPad. He's wearing red. Okay. This is case 2A 0675571. This is on for sentencing. Are we proceeding to sentencing today, Ms. Liu? We are not, Your Honor. Um, if I may, I um, talked with Mr. McIntyre. He also had a conversation with Ms. Stahl um, oh, earlier. Um, okay. Both of us have some concerns. Um, and so for that reason, I'm raising um, 1077 at this time. And I filled out an order in O'Court. Okay. 
Okay. I don't, I don't need that. I, I've already spoke to my lawyer and I was already the public defender that was already clean to me. I, I don't need a competency hearing. I am very well aware of what I'm here for is to basically follow up and to get resources. However, um, this is not the original public defender who I have spoken to. So um, there is the basic agreement already to let me be released. And I was going to, and still I'm going to be following up with any further court dates for which uh, you give me any. Um, Do you want to I am very well. I have uh, email. I am very much I'm in round two. Um, so can actually. However, I am going to be following up with any um, any court dates that you assign me from sure. where I was already told I could be released yesterday. And basically, I don't have any holds on me as far as anything else goes. I've been very thoroughly, wrongfully um, traumatized, traumatized by um, police here in one in, uh, your territory. And, and it doesn't matter. It's okay. I'm not going to discuss that. I would just like to let you know um, I pled not guilty. Um, and I, I don't, I, I, I just want to. Uh, do you understand what you're here for today? Uh, what was it that you were having me here for? Well, you um, you previously pled guilty to assault in the fourth oh. degree. Oh, um, that's a wrongful. It's a wrongful arrest, but it's okay. I'll accept it because basically, yes, that's okay. I did not assault anybody, but I had people that were following me around going to the law. Um, I just pled guilty. I adopted, I adopted that statement as my own. And so basically, I'm, um, I'm very just really under the weather. No, not really. I'm just really upset. Very extremely upset. And I'm okay to uh, talk to you and to basically follow up with the failure to appear. Um, basically. Okay, give me a moment. Let me talk to your attorney, Mr. McIntyre. Thank you for answering my questions. Um, Ms. Liu, um, can you describe in a little more detail the um, some of the issues that, that you were having? Um, thank you. Um, the issues that uh, Ms. Stahl let me know that she had yesterday, or not yesterday, when, uh, the last time she spoke with him, um, had to uh, do with um, getting um, off topic and, and talking about some, um, essentially some theories. Um, that um, kind of was worrying her. Um, when I spoke with him today, um, the difficulty I had was um, about remaining Mental on topic. Um, and um, I, I think out the gate, Mental he was- health resources. Maybe. Okay, sir, it's Mental my turn now. Resources. And um, so I was I getting a little bit concerned. That's what I'm going to reach out for before I am released. Is mental health okay. resources. That's you, were you I'm connected gonna... with services before Mr. McIntyre? Um, I plan to get connected with resources, yes. Have you ever had an official diagnosis of any type? Bipolar, bipolar disorder. Um, bipolar type 2. Were you previously on any medications for that? Um, yes, but um, I'm going to be getting back on my medications after I get released. I do not mean to get on any medications while I'm in custody here in this ship. Um, I, I just want to get released. I am extremely upset, and I feel that I have a very, very legitimate reason to be upset. And he does. And he's going to tell us what it is soon. And once he tells you why he absolutely has to get released, all of you are going to agree with him. Um, so it's okay, though. Man, I will not, you are not me. Uh, I, everybody's okay. I'm, I'm no, I, I I needed to talk to you to, to, to kind of work through this. Yeah, I, I, there's can, uh, something for uh, one of the local resources here. However, I will get down and send you them um, before, after I leave. Um, so I, I'll let you speak. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, that's okay. Um, uh, I mean, Ms. Lou, he, he seems to have an understanding of what's going on here. I tend to agree with him that some of what he's uh, talking about in terms of what's troubling him is understandable. Um, 
Uh, oh, yeah. like he does have um, a diagnosis that may be unmedicated, but um, do you know what Ms. Liu's role is today? I know you may not have met with her before, but do you know what she does? She's a public defender. I don't want to be sarcastic or, or rude at all. Yes, so, that's best if you don't. But um, um, yes, I understand already that like what you guys are as far as um, excuse me, I just want to be. I, okay, I, let let me talk to the attorneys one more time. Uh, um, yeah, and I, I understand that there was an agreement already prior to this that I was going to be released, which I was released yesterday. However, I've been in, up all night right. in this jail so, so I apologize if I seem a little bit edgy. But, That's um, okay. That's okay. I have to make sure that you guys have my email. Okay. Uh, my Give me a moment. Okay. Give I'm me sorry. a moment. Um, Your Honor, I've outlined the other um, other concerns I have. I put them into the 1077. I can read them um, out loud into the record if if that's let me, helpful. Uh, uh, I just, let me pull it up real quick. Um, and obviously, um, you know, I, I appreciate the court um, making its own inquiry as well. Um, I, I don't mind at all. So I, I plan to get resources. So I'm not here. I'm sorry. You're okay. I'm glad you're sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. I know. That's okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'll let you continue speaking to me. Okay. Um, and, and I did I did read that, Ms. Lou. Thank you. Mr. Gates, um, what is what is your thought on this? Uh, I mean, he, he seems really cogent, Your Honor, today um, and certainly more um, able to stay on point than he was at the last hearing. But um, I, I haven't had the more in-depth conversations that Ms. Lou and her office have, so we, I would ultimately have to um, I wasn't here for the plea, so I mean, I, I think this is probably the, maybe the first or second time I've seen Mr. McIntyre. Yeah. Um, I did not accept the plea. And were you there when he entered the plea, Ms. Liu? No, I was not. Uh, Mr. Um, McIntyre and I have met for the first time today. Okay. And Mr. Gates, um, uh, let me just see real quick. Give me a moment. I, I'm uh, actually um, I'll get down into some resources here. Uh, I'll get some paperwork prior to being released. So uh, I, I I do um, have some some concerns. I'd like to follow back up with Snohomish County and uh, some. You do have a case. You're right. You do have a case. And, uh, yeah, and I've been following up with that as far as the ACLU goes. However, I'm not going to get the ACLU exactly yet. Um, I'm going to be very, uh, I'll just be reserved and let you guys continue to your, uh, okay. uh, and I just, I know I'm um, your, your delegations or whatever, but I, I have uh, very, very, very wrongful imprisonment. However, what happened, I did plead guilty to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not going to, um, um, what's it called again? Um, I, I, I just, I, I, that was what was in the judge. I don't know if it was you or not, but I think it was. Um, she wanted me to get, um, to follow up for my court day here before. And it was basically to follow up, to follow okay. up. With let me ask, questions. let me ask you a couple other questions. Um, uh, where, where, do you, where do you where do you typically live? Um, I'm going to be getting down into some homeless shelters. I used to work as a case monitor for Volunteers of America. However, as of right now, I'm a little trained, and I still have a month or so before my next court date with uh, Snohomish County, and uh, and that, that, that's okay. It's, uh, I I'm very much very well prepared. And I'm and I'm very much just eager to get out of this wrong, out of this jail cell, and to spend time with my uh, self and my 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 late wife. Um, You're right. You do have an upcoming court date in Snohomish County, and that is scheduled for August 3rd at 1:30. Right. 
So, um, so I have I have contacts, so, uh, and I like to maintain contact with you, um, just uh, through my through my public defender or the cross or the prosecutor, whatever. I just extremely eager to get out of this uh, jail cell and to go get some breakfast. I have a couple dollars in my pocket. Boom! That's it. That's all he wants, Judge. Judge. He wants to go get some breakfast. So now you have to let him out because we all understand. We also all want to just go and get some breakfast right now. And and anything other than that is cruel and unusual punishment. Okay. Um, so I, on, that's okay. Let me talk. Um, okay. Based on uh, my conversation here today, it seems, although he disputes the charge, he understands that um, it was his decision to plead guilty. He is um, uh, understands once I prompted him that he's here for sentencing with an expectation, I believe, that he would get out. It sounds like he wishes to engage in services without prompting. He knew he had a case in um, Snohomish County with a case coming up. Um, his frustrations, as I said, are you know, understandable given his situation. Um, I, uh, at this point, I would see no reason to order a competency evaluation. Okay. How many people watching this video see no reason for a competency evaluation? <laughs> How many people agree with that sentence? And um, I would be, no. I would be no. preparing. No, I, what I'm saying, I'm not going to order a competency evaluation. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. And I would be, um, I would like to proceed to sentencing on this matter. Uh, we can I, I Okay, hang on, let me finish, let me finish talking. Um, I mean, I understand uh, some of the issues that defense counsel may have had um, with him, and I see some of that here during my colloquy, but um, it's, it's not, it doesn't rise to the level where I think it um, is necessary to do a competency evaluation. So um, I don't know if you want to go into a private room and talk to him about the sentencing or whether we should just proceed to sentencing, Ms. Lewis. Go ahead. Your Honor, I think my, my uh, client sounds like he wants to go ahead with that. So I think okay. we're ready to do that. Okay. If Is there a judgment and sentence in there? Yes, Your Honor. I just added one. one. Great. Thank you. Um, and let me take a look here. I'm sorry. I just have to be behind there. I don't, I'm non-violent and I don't hurt. Okay, me. hang on. We're going to do this one, one, um, one piece at a time here. Let me first um, hear the recommendation of the uh, city on this matter. Well, you're under the, the original recommendation was uh, essentially for, better for the 12 days that he had served at that point uh, with a 24 month okay. suspended sentence. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Your Honor, can we, can we briefly mute him? There's, I have quite a bit of information to go over. Okay, if you can stay quiet for a minute, thank you. We'll get back with you in just a moment. Go ahead. All right, so in addition to those, um, Your Honor, the, uh, there was an abstain condition, uh, alcohol and drug evaluation and treatment, no contact with the alleged victim and stay away from the Safeway 21401 uh, Pack Highway South. The, the sentencing was initially set over so that um, the court could get a PSI on Mr. McIntyre and so that the city could run a triple I on him because uh, when he pleaded guilty, he had no Washington criminal history. Uh, however, since he pleaded guilty, or since this uh, alleged incident, as your honor can see, he has racked up just a, a litany of charges in, in Washington, including uh, a criminal mischief out of Everett from uh, March of this year, for which he's already been convicted, uh, harassment also out of uh, Everett from January of this year, for which he's also been convicted, uh, trespassing in second and uh, resisting arrest out of uh, Snohomish County, for which he's al already been convicted. Moreover, uh, he has several cases outstanding in, in Everett, and his uh, in-state criminal history runs to nearly 40 pages. In Arizona, he has arrests uh, for drug possession in October 2020, 
aggravated assault on an officer in disorderly conduct from April 2020, another aggravated assault on an officer from March of 2020, and a misdemeanor arrest uh, resisting theft, possession of drug paraphernalia, and assault combined with a felony robbery uh, in January of 2020. None of those uh, Arizona charges have dispositions listed yet. So I, I, I think that means that they're still open and valid. None of them have dispositions listed yet. So I think that means they're still open. I'm not a lawyer, so I, I don't know. Um, but he says that as he goes on, that quite a few more have dispositions open. So I think I think he's in a lot of trouble. In Utah, he has uh, arrests for possessing another's ID, disor- disorderly conduct, three associated misdemeanor drug-related charges, all from October of 2018 with no dispo listed. In Georgia, he has a misdemeanor assault, disorderly and obstruction case from December 2019. Also, no disposition listed. That is in warrant status. In New York, he had had an arrest for assault two, uh, injuring a victim uh, 65 years or older where the defendant is at least 10 years younger, and a harassment in the second degree for physical contact from August of 2019 with no dispo listed. He has another arrest for obstruction of circulation and harassment in the first from September 2019, also with no dispo. In California, he has a robbery from 2017 that's currently in warrant status, an arrest for trespassing, uh, obstruction, exhibiting a deadly deadly weapon, not a firearm from 2018 for which he was convicted, uh, theft, uh, possession of drug paraphernalia and obstruction from August of 2018 for which he was convicted, and uh, one charge that's listed as ADW with force. Don't know what that means, but it was a felony and he was uh, convicted. That was from May of 2022 and he was convicted on that. And in, 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 and in Indiana, he has an arrest for battery and resisting arrest from May of 2019 with no dispo. He has active warrants in, in at least three separate jurisdictions in Georgia, one in California. And those were just the highlights from his uh, criminal history, Your Honor. He has uh, several other arrests that, for um, theft and a few driving offenses that, that uh, all list no dispositions. Thank you. Oh, my. Well, so then what was your recommendation? based on all of that. Taser. Well, we're kind of in the same position, Your Honor, especially given what uh, defense counsel uh, had mentioned, as well as Mr. McIntyre himself, kind of at a loss for what to do, uh, lacking a PSI at this point. I I don't know Um, if it's... Well, I suppose one thing that we, well, one thing that we could do, hang on, I'm going to... Officer, can you unmute him for just a moment? I am going to get resources. I am very upset, and I am understanding that uh, I am not um, in any way a threat to anyone, but I am going to get resources. I am so sorry that I have okay. bad PTSD, and they put me in here on the very... Um, okay. It's okay. I am sorry. Everything's okay. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm sorry. I am, he, he, he didn't know what to do. I am still okay. And he was already, they were already on board with letting me get released. And I am not going to get, um, I'm not going to uh, skip out on getting pamphlets for resources here from the jail, from the jail. Um, I am sorry that I'm really upset. I'm just excited to get out of the jail. And, um, you know, by okay. breakfast. Give me a moment. Let me talk to the okay. attorney again, okay. sir. Okay. okay, thank you. That's okay. Um, well, that, I mean, all of that certainly uh, is concerning um, Mr. Gates. I'm okay, though, ma'am. Ma'am, I, I'm okay. I want to get help anyways. I want to go to get treatment for, um, you know, okay. my mental health. Okay. And I, and I give me one moment to talk to the attorneys, sir. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, okay. So, um, I would like for him to have a, some sort of a release plan if that's possible. Um, it's pretty clear based on his experience, some of the issues that he has that, um, he is in need of, of services. Um, just wondering whether, uh, do we have, we don't have Pierre Kent on here. Uh, I don't know if Pierre Kent has had any contact with him. 
I think we could certainly send um, one of our support services uh, specialists up to maybe conduct a PSI. Would now be a good time to hear from defense? On yes, sentencing? thank you. Okay. Um, and Your Honor, what I would suggest, um, I've been talking to Mr. McIntyre earlier today, and then I'm also, I've also been listening to what he had to say um, when we we're in court. Um, I'm suggesting, Your Honor, I know the original recommendation was for a chemical dependency evaluation. What sounds like it would be more appropriate then, um, if the court is planning on sentencing today, is for a mental health evaluation um, for him to, because um, he's talking about wanting to get engaged with those services, and it sounds like it might be um, right right on the nose of what he um, could use. Um, and obviously, we're open to Pierre Kent um, coming to see him and trying to set him up with the services he needs to um, for reentry. Yeah, I guess one of the things that I well, first of all, I think given his his actually quite lengthy history, um, the the original recommendation was for credit for time served. Correct. Yes, that's correct. All right. Well, I think that um, uh, I mean I, I do need uh, some recommendation from the city at least with respect to jail time. We can talk further about the um, the conditions of his sentence, but. Was the city seeking to um, increase its recommendation or? Yes, Your Honor, to uh, 30 days. I, I believe at this point, though, he has credit for. Well, here's Sorry, my concern. I mean, my concern is that if I, I I'm, I'm just not confident. I know he, I absolutely believe that he wants to engage with services. I, the degree to which he's going to be able to do that um, I have concerns about. I don't know. Is it? And I don't know if it's possible to have a mental health evaluation, um, you know, which is separate, obviously, from a competency evaluation, but a mental health evaluation uh, while he's in custody. I mean, we had, and and let me correct myself. I did accept the plea on this, and he um, had an appointment. I had, I had previously ordered a PSR, and um, he didn't show up for his appointment with support services. So what I'm wondering is maybe we'll have support services come and visit him in the jail, and then we will um, then we will have um, see if we can if Pierre Kent can visit him in the jail. And once we get that information, then we will proceed to sentencing. But if I were to release him pending sentencing, um, I, I I really have um, serious concerns that he would. Uh, not appear for a future court date or appointment with support services or that he would um, uh, perhaps commit a new offense given that he has, um, he's, I mean, clearly he is in need of services. Um, officer, can you unmute for a moment? Thanks. I am man, I'm sorry. I will follow up. I am wanting to just get released. I am not going to do I, you're not, I'm not sorry. I mean, I'm sorry, okay? I'm just very upset and I'm very, very traumatized by how they, drama, how they brought me here on a warrant. But I'm going to follow up with services here from Ken, okay? So I'm really traumatized. I mean, but I'm really excited to get out of this jail, okay? I'm not going to tell Ken. I'm sorry. It's well, okay. Mr. McIntyre, Mr. McIntyre, the issue is is that you do have a lengthy criminal history, so I can't decide an appropriate sentence until I have a little more information. And your history suggests that you're not going to appear. So um, we can. I will, I will appear. I will appear. I have an email that I am having difficulty keeping in touch with, but I will not be not appearing here. I, as far as I, 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 please just let me get released, ma'am. I'm so sorry. I did not, I'm not going to hurt anyone, and I promise you I will follow through with following through with the mental health provider. I swear to you, I'm not kidding. I will not be not following through. I also have my email, which is an active email. I am okay. not kidding. Okay, Mr. McIntyre. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I know you can let me go, and I know you are going to, and they are just looking for reasons to prison me further, but there is no reason because I am very, 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm being dense. I'm being dense. I, I just want to get some breakfast. I got a couple bucks in my pocket, and I just can't wait to get out of jail and get my breakfast. And I just, I'm just me, you know. And I'm, I'm just sorry. I, I, um, there's no, okay, I just can't wait to get out of jail and, and just smoke cigarettes and eat breakfast. And if, let me. Okay. Uh, just a uh, moment. Uh, just a moment, sir. Um, I'm, you know. I do understand, Ms. Liu, why you were seeking um, a competency evaluation. Um, I, I uh, it appeared to me that that was not necessary. I guess one of the concerns I have is, um, now, I mean, I have more information now regarding his past history. Um, I just, I'm, I'm not sure what to do with this case because um, obviously I don't want him to be in custody any longer than he needs to be, um, but the court has serious concerns, um, public safety concerns, and I don't know whether um, if the court were to impose affirmative conditions, the extent to which he would be able to comply with that. Um, so I guess, and I don't know whether in the context of a competency evaluation, they can determine the extent to which he could, um, he would be amenable to that sort of thing. Um, I guess my concerns are raised a little bit just given how upset he is. But on the other hand, I do understand why he would be upset. Um, Your Honor, could the court order the PSI? Um, Presuming it, it could be done by maybe Wednesday, uh, we could have another hearing on Wednesday. The court would have the additional information from support services, and perhaps we could have them uh, report additional information about their interactions with Mr. McIntyre during the PSI. Okay, that sounds good. And then what I'll do then is, um, Ms. Liu, uh, I will reserve, you know, on the issue of your previous request, and if we need to readdress that at the next hearing, but. Let me um, call the court administrator uh, for a brief moment. I just want to see if we're going to be able to get that done um, as quickly as we all hope. So give me just a moment. Nope. No, they're not. Um, uh, I was not able to reach her, um, but I think what we will do is, um, I think let's do this. I'm going to set it over to next Friday if they can get there with the hope that we can get it done much sooner, in which case we will advance the hearing. Does that um, meet with everyone's. I, I understand, Mr. McIntyre, that you're that you're upset you wanted to be released today. Um, the court received new information today that does um, that does cause the court some concern. Uh, and so I will set this over. Your your honor, real quick, I just cut the court administrator. Yes. She said next week will not be able to work due to trainings. Uh, the soonest they could do oh, is God. the following Tuesday for a PSI. To visit him? Yes. So not next week, but the week after Tuesday. At, at the soonest, but that's not confirmed. All right. I will set this over to, oh, I see that he's upset. I understand Mr. McIntyre, I really do. Um, I'll set this over to the 28th. Marcella, um, are you there? Marcella from Peter Kent, are you? Yeah. Hi, yeah, I'm Marcella. here. So um, do you think that um, uh, you or you might be able to get up and see him sometime within the next seven days? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, 
And then uh, we will have our support services specialists do the PSI. Uh, let's see. So I'm not sure what the bail was previously, but um, I'm going to um, impose a no bail hold pending the next court date. Um, officer, you can unmute him one more time. How long do you want to hold me here when you can live the rest of your life as long as you want? And I am just saying, I am excited. Okay, Mr. Mr. McIntyre, Mr. McIntyre. That's fine. Whatever, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I, am I, I understand that you're upset. I will follow through with mental health services. Okay. You are not okay. going to have any type of a crisis. So you let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you can calm down for just a moment, I understand. I'm so that. sorry. I'm just really traumatized. And I, I appreciate that. And I was going to be very, very merciful as far as just Okay. Being I, I, I hear you telling me that you want help. You want treatment. I hear I you telling me help, that, but I was going to. It's okay, that, you are, that you are frustrated and you want out of jail. I hear you loud. Yes, I want out of jail. You are going to release me. And I was going to be very... Very, very cool about things like falling up with you because I'm still going to. I'm still going to. I'm just really upset. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you had some kind of delusion that you thought you knew my late wife. My late wife. Okay, it's a cute no. I am very happily married and I will be very much getting released from here within the next seven days, is it? Is it how long do I have to wait to talk to a mental health provider here that can release me? I oh, so I'm going yeah. to. I'm so sorry. It's like that. It's just, uh, okay. oh, no. Hold on. Ah! Um. Uh, honestly, at this point, I, I I think I need to order the. I hate to say it, but I think I'm going to have to order the the. This is such a tough case. I'm sorry that I'm taking so long. I just, I hate to order a competency evaluation when uh, when there's a chance, but I also, I don't want to be back in this position at the next, at the next hearing. Um, and I mean, I just, like I said, I do understand that he's upset, however, um, I do. I, 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 I guess I do at this point have concerns regarding uh, competency given his behavior here in court today. Um, would either side have an objection if I signed an evaluation? I think we can also, I mean, there's nothing, I, I think Pierre Kent can go and visit with him. I think that's a good idea. Um, we can have, I mean, this is post-conviction, so unless you have an objection, Ms. Lou, we can certainly have support services visit with him as well, um, but. No, no, no objection from the city, Your Honor. Um, as this I hearing let, goes on, yeah. the city's, uh, city's concerns grow. Um, and defense um, would have no objection to a 1077 evaluation. I will note that if we do um, order one, there's also the um, OCRPs will also um, there, there's an agency within Western State that always comes in and takes a That's right. A the look. forensic navigator. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Well, Mr. McIntyre, I, I, I was sincerely hoping that we could proceed with your sentencing today, but um, based on the course of this hearing, I do have some serious concerns. So. I will sign the order and I think, um, let's see, uh, 
I'm going to add a few things to what you wrote, if you don't mind, Ms. Liu. Uh, Thank you. understands what she's saying. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and sign this order. We'll set a return date uh, for the 28th. All right, I have signed that order. Um, and uh, uh, I was already given a fucking wrong to embrace. I am going to call Mr. McIntyre. Um, I have, I I've signed the orders in your case. I did the 28th. The 28th. I endured trying to find them. If we if we get the evaluation back sooner, we're going to see you sooner. We've been okay, averaging. Okay. okay. Then, so uh, we will we will put you on as soon as we have that. Okay. There is going to be that. Health, okay. There should be a mental health provider that should come here with Okay, it. and that's why Wait. that's why Marcella from Pier Kent is going to come and see you in the jail, and, and see what yes, services you might be eligible for. Okay. Okay. And then I, okay. I'm sorry. And then I can get released. I'm but, very. Okay. Sorry, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that at the next hearing, which may okay, be maybe earlier. Okay. 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 And so that, Mr. McIntyre, that will conclude today's hearing. I understand uh, that you're upset, but we need to move on. Well, so I was sure just we can go ahead and uh, the, the iPad there. Oh. Thank you. Your Honor, real quick on the pretrial release on his. Can you check the the far left box where bail is main? There's um, put down that one's not checked, but the no bail hold is checked. Yeah, that's what I wanted was no bail hold. I yeah, just the far left, left box. Can you check that I'm one? Fast forward. Okay. Um, A little bit to get to the next one. This is case. <laughs> This guy is so one file, two violations, the same file. Uh, it appears that you were before me back on June 1st, 2023. You pled guilty to count two of domestic violence. I dismissed count one for the plea agreement. 
you were scheduled to be sentenced on July 27th. I reinstated your bond with the condition for you to receive treatment at Bear River. You were ordered to report to probation and you did not do that. So you failed to report to probation within 14 days as ordered by the court. What happened, sir? I, there was a misunderstanding. I didn't understand that that needed to report to the probation part. And I'm glad we appeared to him on Monday morning and go, he just got to tell me where to go, who to call. So if you're watching this, you've seen a lot of court cases. So there's no way that he did not know that he was supposed to report to probation. There's just no way that that slipped everybody's mind and no one told him. You said you did what on Monday morning? I said it, the this probation thing is just a misunderstanding. I guess it wasn't clearly explained to me about this that I needed to go. I just need to know who to call and who to talk to on Monday morning and I will appear to them first thing. <clears throat> I don't even, where is it that I go to to see them for this probation? Do I call them? Go where else? Where? She ignores him. <laughs> the other issue in this file is that while you were on bond, because you're still on bond in this matter, you were not to use, purchase, or possess any controlled substances. I have a PA 53 violation alleging that you violated this term by using heroin back on July 14, 2023. Yes, but did anybody clearly tell him he wasn't allowed? The allegation is that you admitted to using heroin on that date. <laughs> what is today's date? Well, today's the 15th, sir. You have the right to have a contested, you have the right to have a contested hearing on the bond violation. And you have the right to be represented by counsel at that hearing. If you're found to be in violation of your bond, your bond can be revoked pending sentencing, that is at least. Uh, and you also can face a contempt of court order, the maximum penalty of 93 days in jail or up to $7,500 in fines. Do you understand that, sir? Yes. Okay. Did you ever go to Bear River? I'm still waiting on a bed. I'm transporting on Tuesday. They finally just now got the bed open. Gotcha. I've had to call him twice a week. Mm -hmm. But they've got transport set up for Tuesday afternoon about 3.30. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be picking me up from discount month from breaks where we're okay. Council, you can address Bond. Thank you, Your Honor. I did have the opportunity to speak with Mr. Kane. Uh, he informs me that he's uh, been in the Ingham County area for the past three years. Um, he's also informed me that he's always in court when required to be there. I am concerned um, about uh, about potential withdrawals with Mr. Kane. Um, and if he remains in custody, I do think he may need some medical attention. Um, based on those things, we would respectfully request a reasonable bond in this matter. I think under the circumstances, and Mr. K, you and I have had a bit of a history with this file as it relates to you following all of my conditions of bond. And now I have a new violation and I had to issue a bench warrant, <coughs> but you didn't turn yourself in on the bench warrant. 
I didn't even know about the warrant. I was walking to work and the um, one of the officers seen me that knew me and come rushing right up to get me. I had no knowledge of this warrant until this morning because I was looking at him like, well, you have a warrant for your arrest. And when we got here, they gave me like five different reasons and why there was a warrant, but none of them could make sense. Okay, well, there's a warrant because you were supposed to, there was a warrant because you were supposed to report to probation within 48 hours of your release. Two weeks went by, you failed to report. Uh, the other concern, sir, and, and the, you're quite aware of the history that we've had in this file, there's been multiple allegations of the violation of the bond um, in the past. And although I dismissed your PA 53 back on June 1st, it was not because I determined you were not in violation of your bond. It was because of the plea agreement and I thought it was in the interest of justice. But there's been situations in where you blatantly violated my bond conditions in the past. Um, I've gone out of my way to assist you even at it was, as it relates to the matter uh, that you had pending uh, that was not connected to this, but was connected to you getting your, pro your personal items from the property under an eviction matter so that you could be compliant with my no contact order uh, and you uh, made efforts to try to deceive the court. I don't trust that if I release you that you're going to do what you're supposed to do and that's because of our pa your past uh, history here with this file. So I will not be granting a personal reconnaissance bond. Bond will be set in the amount of 5,010%, which was the bond that you previously had. Uh, and you can seek and get whatever medical treatment you need to address uh, your uh, potential withdrawal while you're in the custody of the jail. You will also be ordered to see Pro, meet with probation so they can provide the court with a substance abuse assessment. Your sentencing date's going to now have to be reset because you never complied with the court order back in, in June. So that means we won't have a accurate report as to how you should be sentenced uh, at the time of your scheduled sentencing date, which is the 27th of this month. So we'll have to reset the clock on that and then you can make new arrangements with Bear River. They're gonna have to pick you up from Ingham County if you don't if you don't post the bond. Do you understand that? I, I can't post the bond, but I can appear, Your Honor, if you change my back to the PR bond, I will appear first thing Monday morning to the Youth Probation Department. Oh, I'm not, I, this is, we're, not nego we're not negotiating that. We're, I'm not changing the bond, it's 5,010%. And you need to make sure you meet with probation uh, if you post that bond for some reason within 48 hours of your release. Do you understand that? Yes, how long is this going to be that this is going to take so I don't know how long I'm incarcerated? What do you mean? I, you're, I, not I, being, I, you're not being sentenced to jail time, it's a bond. No, no, what I mean is, yeah, I can't post this type of bond. I, I have no money. Okay, well I, then I, you'll, you'll be there until your sentence and then we'll figure out what your sentence is. I don't know what your sentence is going to be at this time. I don't have a report. You didn't comply with my order so that I can get a timely report. So now we have to restart that so that we can get an, a, a recommendation from probation as to how you should be sentenced. That Any mean, other questions? You might just go ahead and just give me the 90, what is this maximum 93? You might as well just go and give me the 93 days now then because I can't post I might, as well, I might as well just go ahead and tell you your bond is 5,010%. You're all set. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I love her. She's great. She's great. She did. She did give him chances. I saw some of the old ones and she did it and for no reason. Like I didn't understand why she gave him chances because he was just entitled before as he was in, in this one, but she did. And now she, she definitely had enough. And the judges are funny almost all of them when they have enough, they have enough and that's it. It's over. <laughs> Okay, okay, Mr. Watts, I'll call your case, Mr. Watts, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Now following the matters of the people versus Dorian Watts. This is ticket SP1385559. Count one, expired plates. Count two, no receipt of or unsigned registration. Count three, no proof of insurance. Ticket number SP1322740. 
Count one, fail to stop for stop sign. Count two, no proof of insurance. Ticket number SP1183392. Count one, drove while license suspended. Count two, no insurance misdemeanor. Count three, improper plates. Ticket number SP1322760. One count, drove while license not valid or improper license. Ticket number SP1385573. Count one, fail to secure a load. Count two, fail to tarp load. Ticket number SP1385568, defective windshield. And ticket number SP1385617, drove while license suspended. Appearances for the record, starting with counsel, please. Bob Zoranik for Mr. Watts. Mr. Watts, can you state your name, please? Dorian Watts. Uh, Mr. Watts would like all of these set for a jury trial judge. I think we would probably need to assign him an attorney. All right. You can't afford an attorney, Mr. Watts? They what? Can well, I afford can an attorney? Afford, can you afford an attorney, sir? No, no, I can't afford no attorney. Okay. All right, so I can get you an attorney signed to these cases. They don't want to need an attorney, man. I'm not me. I don't need no attorney. I did five days in the county jail. They need to take whatever I owe them out of them five days and that hundred thousand dollar cash bond that judge gave me. That's what they need to be doing. I'm not Mr. Watson. Mr. Watson, nobody in my court for tra for traffic would ever give you a hundred thousand dollar bond. All my bonds oh, are zero dollars. So, Mr. Watson, I'm, you're talking about a different matter. That's not with this court, okay? So you may have been. It's, 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 it's Watson. Watson. Well, it's Watson. W A T T S. Mr. Watson, yes, you can't see me, but no, I can. Oh, so your turn. Listen, sir, sir, sir. I'm really trying yes, right now. To keep an even tone, okay? Okay. I know it's yeah. tough, but you sound. Why are you trying to out talk me, Mr. Watts? Go ahead, tell me everything you want to say. I'm gonna let you okay. talk. Okay. Okay, good. I appreciate that. Listen, y'all, look, I'm tired of the state of Michigan targeting me. I've they done violated my sixth, seventh, and eighth amendment right to the U.S. Constitution before I went to prison and after I got home. I'm fed up with the state of Michigan. They need to be incarcerated just like Judge Haley went to jail for fixing traffic tickets. They need to be. Now, my argument is this here. I cleared up all my traffic tickets on 1st, 5th of 87, and I ain't had license since then, and I ain't had license since since Judge Haley went to penitentiary. I'm not paying no more tickets. I'm finna send y'all, I'm finna pay them all right. You finna get some money in the mail. It might not be the kind of money y'all want, but I'm finna send you some. I'm gonna send the, the, the collections agency some money and then the judge can do what she wanna do with me. I did seven years in the penitentiary, ma'am, for, for a crime that I committed, but at the same time, they forged my signature to 25 years. I'm fed up with the state of Michigan and they can kiss my ass and give me my cash and they can take they ass to jail. And that's how you say I'm frustrated. You damn right I am. All the stuff I've been through. You can't give me, I ain't, I robbed somebody ain't had no $100,000 cash bond. Somebody gave me that bond and I did five days in the county jail. They should have took it out them five days. I don't just do no time for you people for nothing. Take it out them five days or leave me alone. I'm going to keep on driving. You do what you want to do. Put on the docket. If they catch me driving, take me to jail. I don't care. I do a year in jail when I get back out, it's still going to be the same thing. Because that's how I am, y'all. I'm 66 years old. And I'm, I ain't got no age. Look at I'm 66, y'all. I ain't thinking about them people downtown. They owe me money. They owe me money. Now, that's what I got to say. Now, do what you got to do. Okay. So I need to assign you some traffic tickets. Okay. Because you're going to be in the county jail. Okay. 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 That is correct. I want a jury trial, and I can explain to the jury why I don't have no license and let the jury decide on my accusations or whatever it is. I have a corrected abstract, Your Honor, and I ain't had license since that corrected abstract. I ain't think about the state of Michigan. Okay. All right. So, 
Do, can I assign you counsel? Or you want to represent yourself? No, you can, you can assign me a counsel. I'm entitled to counsel. I'm entitled okay. to counsel. All you got to do is present the evidence that I, that I want him to present. That's his job. Okay. All right, Mr. Watts. But I got to get counsel for you because I can't just, I got, and then we can get a trial date that works for that counsel. Okay? Okay, it don't matter. Just send me a trial date. Whenever y'all ready, just let me know. Okay, so it's probably going to be in, because I have to get counsel first, so I have to make sure that the date works with them. So I'm just trying to explain to you. So you know. Okay? All right, so when I'm you get off this call, can you call the courtroom? I'm going to set him for a pre-trial in two weeks just to make sure he has counsel assigned and so that we can pick a jury trial date for him. Okay? Okay, no problem. No problem. Okay. So you, so you ready to take down what I have? Yep. You ready to take down the number, Mr. Watts? Uh, I got the court room number. Okay. You sure? <laughs> well, I just called the court room this morning. You ain't called us. You may have called down to the front. So I want to make sure you have our direct court room number, okay? Okay. Let me get a phone. Let me get a phone. Okay. Get let me know when you're ready, okay, Mr. Watts? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm ready now. I'm ready now. Three just one, call the phone. 313. Hold on. Hold on, man. Okay. That's three one three nine six five nine six five two 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 nine three. Okay. Nine nine three. Yep, I've been calling that number since eighty since I got out of prison. I've been calling that number, man. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna have you come back on July thirty first. Okay, via Zoom, so I can make sure that counsel has been appointed to you and we can pick a jury trial date, okay? Thank you very much, ma'am. I appreciate your patience. You're very welcome. Okay, and next time, though, we can't use... But when you trying to, when you done been through what I done been through, ma'am, that's the only thing them white folks understand downtown, including federal agent David Hyman, okay? All right? I'm telling you, they murdered Lieutenant, they murdered a narcotic agent. They should be on death row for killing a narcotic agent and shooting my friend. It's beyond traffic tickets with me. I ain't think about no traffic tickets. I'm thinking about that FBI agent over there on the 26th floor, Federal Agent David Harmon with his white racist ass. See how deep this goes. Mr. Watts, Mr. Watts, but you can't. Not in court. Now, I gave you some leeway because I can tell okay. you were busted. This isn't the forum to to use bad okay. language. You just can't. Right, so I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry, Yana. All right, Mr. Watson. But then you coming back to see me to make sure you have some on, counsel assigned? On 7 31st. All right, and then call the courtroom so we can get some information so I can get that counsel assigned to you, okay? Okay, so you want me to call now or do you want me to call? Right, call uh, right now, please. Yep, yep, call right now, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. All right, bye-bye. Well, you made it to the end. Whew, that was a long one, but they were good. <laughs> I do have a couple more um, I want to put up, but that was a long one, so I might not today. I uh, got some stuff to do, but yeah, thanks for hanging out with me, whoever made it to the end. Um, you did great, and yeah, the, the attorney that got chewed out by Giles, he'll be okay. He won't, he won't ever do that again and he'll be okay. Giles is just real, real hard on the attorneys. Now the entitled guy, he probably won't be okay. Cause I can't imagine that he's going to learn anything. Maybe he's going to be in jail for a while. So maybe he will, but I bet you he posts bond. And, and the other guy that, that got the mental examination, he's finally going to get some help. I think he has two different services coming one this week and then one within the next two weeks. So, so, you know, he might be right as rain once they get his meds figured out and that would be great for him because he has all those court cases <laughs> that he has to fix everywhere. <laughs> no, it was fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you next time.